Right, so now that we uh, have the, the user schema, we can create the model for the user, right? So we can, uh, we'll do that in a separate file. It's also a good practice to separate these, these things, right? Um, it makes the schema reusable. It makes the model reusable all by its own, right? Uh, so let's create here the user.model.server.js, right? Notice the naming convention, right? Uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we know that the, the, the entity that, is, that is, uh, this is responsible for, it says what the role of this file is, right, of the model, managing the model, and on which side of the uh, stack are we, on the client side or the server side. Uh, so let's, uh, let's use this. Uh, we're going to need that schema we just, we just uh, declared. So let's load it from user schema, user schema. Uh, and uh, we're going to require that schema we just created. So it's a uh, user schema. There it is. So this user schema is, is going to be bound to this user schema right here. Right? Uh, so I have that. Now that I have the user schema, I'm going to declare a model to be able to manipulate this, these users. Yes? Right? And to, to do that, uh, we're going to create a model. But to create a model, we're going to, use, we're going to need, need mongoose. Right? So let's load mongoose first. Mongoose. So require um, mongoose. Let's create, let me do the uh, mongoose first and then the user schema. Now that I have the schema, I can create the model. So I'm going to say var uh, user model. Uh, is gonna, I'm going to use mongoose right, to create the model. Uh, and I'm going to give it the name. Uh, you know, a good name might be user model. But since tomorrow I'm going to create another user model, uh, I'm going to I'm going to call this graduate user model, okay? Uh, and I'm going to use the user schema, user schema. Everybody okay? All right. Okay, so now I have the model, and I can start uh, creating the CROT operations for creating this this uh, this uh, these users, right? Uh, so so let's let's create each one at a time. Uh, so we have a function function to be able to create a user, right? Presumably, right, somebody's going to give us an object of type user. Notice that we don't know where this user object is coming from, and it's not our responsibility to know where this is coming from, right? If it's coming from HTTP, that's fine, right? If it's being parsed from a body, from JSON that's coming from an Angular client, that's fine. If it's coming from a file that somebody's reading a JSON file and it's inserting all this, that's fine. Right? If it's coming from some test, right, uh, JavaScript, that's okay too. It is not the responsibility of the model to know how any of this data is being used. Right? Its own responsibility is to store the data as it's giving and to retrieve the data as it's being stored in the database. Again, uh, the, um, uh, we have division of concern, right? separation of concern. Uh, so the only thing that it's responsible for is to use the user model a user model to create a new instance of user and it's done that it's its own responsibility and it's going to return a promise so I'm going to go do that and when I'm done I'm going to send you the, the, the response back how you consume this it's your business it's not my business okay so that's the create uh, so the other one is I want to be able to uh, find a user so find find a user by ID. So presumably we're going to have, be giving a user ID. How you get a user ID, that's your business. right? So I'm going to just say, I'm going to return a user model that find by ID. Okay? And we're going to pass a user ID. That's it. Right? We're just going to retrieve find user ID. That's going to retrieve just one instance because I'm doing it by a primary key. Right? And that makes sense. Right? Another one that we might not, uh, uh, um, another one that's, that's also very common is find all users. Now, whether we actually implement this and somebody's going to use it, right? An admin user might want to list all the users. That might be okay, right? But I'm going to provide it. If you don't want it, don't use it, right? That's your business. But I'm going to provide the, the capability here. It's a, it's a valid uh, query to the database, right? I'm going to return user model find. That's it. Okay. Uh, others here might be a find user by username, right? That 
seems to be a, um, a use case that we want to be, you know, to be able to find, see if somebody already has this username, right? So we can do here username, and we're going to return uh, user model dot find one. I know there's only one because presumably usernames are a primer, um, a, a unique, right? Um, and we can make that, we can make sure of that in the schema. We can say that these usernames, right, we can say that the type is string, yes, and we're going to say that unique true. Right, that means that it's going to validate and make sure that if there's already a username taken like that, it's going to fail us. Right? It's going to fail us, as if it were a primary key. Okay. Uh, okay, so find one, and it's going to use a username. Right, it's going to return one, just one of those, because we know, right? presumably, there's only one of them. Uh, this one, this uses just find, uses the same find, and from the array, it just returns the first one in the array. Okay, it's up to you to make sure that indeed there's only one of them in there. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, another one is uh, that we want to be able to implement is find a function function find a user by credentials credentials right, and presumably you're going to pass me a username and password. Right, and again, there's, there's presumably there's only one. Oh, sorry, this one uh, is supposed to be username, username, username colon username. So we're filtering by username, right? Uh, and the find by credentials is going to be similar, but we're going to query, and it has to match both. Not only the username, but it also has to match the password. Password colon password. So this is treated as like an and, right? Because it's trying to pattern match both, right? I'm going to pattern match and make sure that I'll return instances of which both the username and the password match. Okay. Uh, every single thing. All right. Uh, all right. So I think we have all the finders that we need. We could create more, right? But they all would follow the same naming convention, right? They would all start by find, right? Uh, they, they would all start by uh, th then. If it's not all of them, then uh, you would have user or users. Okay, if we know that it's going to return more than one, right? So um, and then and then by and then some some name that describes what the uh, uh, what the predicate is going to be, right? Um, all right, so let's do the other one. So we got we got the 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 C in crud. We got the R's in crud, right? Now let's do the U in crud, update, right? So let's do fu function update user. And again, the convention is that you're going to pass me the ID of the user that uniquely identifies this user, and then the new user object, right? The new user uh, the new, with the new data, right? And here we're going to do, again, return, uh, return a return. A, a user model, right? Dot uh, update. Okay, we're gonna match against the user. So this is ID is gonna match user ID, right? And we're gonna update. We're gonna set, right? We're gonna set to the new user. We're going to blindly update everything. Even if you try to change the username, we're going to allow it. That's fine. Uh, if we don't want to do that, right? If we want to disallow certain things, we could use delete, delete new user, and remove the fields we don't want to update. Right? So remove maybe uh, username, right? Maybe delete also new user uh, password. I don't know. Whatever you want to, whatever you don't want them to allow. Maybe password has some other way of changing your password. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. But everything else, you want to change your first name, that's okay. You want to change your last name, that's okay. All right, I think we got the update. Uh, and the last one is I want to remove a user, right? So when, let's see, let's do function uh, delete user, delete user. And for the deleting a user, presumably I only need the user ID to remove, right? Uh, in this case, we're going to return uh, user model uh, dot. Uh, uh, remove, 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 
right? And then a filter, the predicate is just the the primary key that we are that we are matching against. Make sense? All right? Uh, so what we need now we need to make available this API to you know, outside folks, so for instance, the, the, uh, the, the web service. The web service is the one who's receiving all these commands, right, from the, from the client, right? It's receiving all these HTTP requests, right? So we need to expose this model for the, uh, for the clients to use, right? So to do that, uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to tie all these functions. We're going to tie them to the user model. We're going to tie it to, so we're going we're gonna to tie uh, the uh, create user. Right, we're going to tie it to the instance of the user model we just instantiated, right? Uh, and then we're going to use modules, modules, dot export the user model. So anybody who uh, requires this file, right? Who anybody who requires this file is going to have access to the user model. That is going to include all my functions, right? All the finders. Right, all these finders. And plus the uh, update and the delete. See that? Right, so somebody's going to want to import this, right, to make it use, use of it. Uh, and uh, in, in this case, it would be typically the service layer who wants to access this model so that it can start communicating with it. Make sense? And we'll do that next.